now we are now you can hear us ah so they couldn't hear us before yeah of course not ah I that's mean, nice i'm i'm not going to let them hear all the oh, um, screaming all the why hey, did you copy the link <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so um welcome in the second workers cafe uh we are very happy to host you in uh, the workers cooperative of fractal and with uh, our beautiful wall and with these and with uh, all the notes and all the um, information that we prepared for you uh, unluckily because of um, coronavirus and stuff we cannot meet face to face in here and uh, talk with all the workers and and friends and uh, say all the things about our workplaces what is happening and etc but you can hear us and you can comment in the comment sec uh, section we are uh, only in two uh, like two people are here so we won't check the comments while recording the video but please feel welcome we are answering all the comments after the streaming i'm also turning off all the uh, all the notifications yeah. uh, to be calm and focus and uh, we've got some interesting topics for you yes um, so yeah we want to basically well we kind of want to talk about the new unemployment law uh, but what we want to more talk about is about workers rights and the difference between workers rights on paper and actual workers rights in real life on the workplace and why there is such a big difference and what you can do about there being such a big difference. Um, and well, we want to kind of use a new unemployment law as an example of this. Yeah. Um, it's a very hard time, but very busy time and very important time for um, radical um, solidarity unions uh, globally. And on the one hand, we are very happy to be super busy right now, but on the other hand, it's like, wow, a lot of stuff is happening and probably it will, like, I hope it will lead to some global changes yeah. or like change in perception of like what the work is, what the uh, work conditions are and for the people to be a little bit more conscious in what conditions they are working. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, yeah, I'm very glad that we've got so much of a contact with workers right now. But also they are writing to us with uh, very hard questions and um, a lot of problems in the workplaces connected with cutting hours, being fired, bankruptcies of the companies. And uh, we're gonna use this experience to talk with you today. Yeah. So like the thing that kind of, um, made me want to uh, to talk about uh, the difference between like rights on paper and rights on the workplace was um, when the new law, new law was put into place there were like this poster campaign from RSE basically saying that uh, you can only cut like that it's a mutual agreement between employee and employer to cut the hours without notice which I found was just it was just insincere and kind of putting workers in danger because you tell workers that this is a mutual agreement uh, and that they have the right to say no and you don't tell them that them saying no will lead to being fired. It's kind of reckless to pretend that the workers can say no to something when the result is that they will be fired and that it, it just made me kind of really angry because I felt that RSE was kind of living in their world of, oh, this is the law, without actually knowing how things are at the workplace. Like they were in their own like, little bubble of only knowing the law and not knowing workplaces. And they were actively putting workers in danger by putting of, out information. Yeah, many, um, many lawmakers, assume, like assumption is that everybody will follow the law and everybody yeah. will collaborate to make it happen and will help to uh, like, you know, fight this very hard uh, situation and find the best solution that is not harmful for workers, but the reality check yeah. that 
is happening right now is like very harsh for workers because if we are talking about two actors like a worker and an employer you've got a person who is alone and mm -hmm. working for the wage like you know a, for certain wage every month not having much of a savings of uh, or like you know m much of uh, security in their life and we've got an owner who is not one person this is the owner and the lawyer company that is helping the owner so we are putting the responsibility like institutions things that uh, think that this is a discussion between like the grants the support that companies get so this ability to share the costs of employment for the em uh, employees uh, between the government, so the government is paying 75% of, uh, uh, of a payment, and then there is this 25 paid uh, by employer himself. Uh, that this is the case between institutions like the employer and Minumaula Stockton, so mm -hmm. the um, uh, unemployment office. And in fact, all the responsibility, like in the end of the chain, there is a worker that it's, who is not paid in the end of the month. Mm. So we are facing this kind of situations that somebody is writing, hey, um, okay, I was working more than 25% because the assumption was people people's hours are reduced to 25%, employer is paying for what the worker is working, and then the government is putting the money on the top of that. And what was happening, people were working more than 25%, sometimes 70%, sometimes 100%. And then still the employers wanted to pay 25. So yeah. we, ho we have few cases when, for example, si a person wasn't paid for 68 hours of work from the last month. Yeah. And this is a drama that uh, like all the responsibility is on the worker like the responsibility for paying bills, buying money the next month. And this is a clash, like, you know, if you're going to the union, you are, uh, if you are lucky, you can solve it in 10 days when the union will contact uh, the company. But in most of the cases, uh, we are going on the like um, court, court case and like mm -hmm. law path and the lawyers are taking care of the case and we have to wait as workers we have to wait for two years to solve the case yeah and then it's like two years that you don't have money and a lot yeah. of times the worker uh, cannot even have one month of unpaid wages basically i mean yeah this was basically like one of the examples that we had that a worker was presented the agreement uh the uh, agreement um and between like let's let let's explain like that was the agreement when you are going to this 25 percent of work time you have to as a worker sign an agreement with your employer that you agree I can, on shortening your hours i can put the like what ise basically has which i think is really misleading i'm going to just put it up uh so this is what ise says so ise says um that the employee has to agree to it uh, and an employee may refuse to accept this and may insist that the period of notice be respected and to be very fair no like it's it's not a mutual agreement it's the employer decides it and if the employee doesn't agree the employee will be fired so calling it a mutual agreement i mean it's basically it's almost gaslighting to say like oh yeah but you have the right to disagree when you don't, you do not have the right to a notice period, period. Like, you do not have the right to a notice period for shortening work hours in Iceland at the moment. It's a complete lie to pretend you have the right, because if you refuse to shorten your work hours, you will be fired. So this right doesn't exist anymore. Um, and Epling is a bit more uh, honest about it. So they, they say that it's supposed to be a mutual agreement However, if the employee refuses, the employer may issue a letter of termination. Which, again, I and find that the letter of termination should be also uh, like after the notice period. But like you know, to yeah, you do have a notice period to be um, to be terminated. But I, I, I just think it's 
it's dishonest to tell a worker you may refuse this, but the employer can punish you for refusing it. Then it is if it's not a right if the employer can punish you for using the right. Like it stopped being a right then. Yeah, we cannot assume that they will follow the law. Yeah. Or they will be that just decent, like. Um, yeah. Um, so, and especially RSE basically putting out, you may refuse this agreement to shorten your work hours. It's just reckless. It's just telling people, yeah, you may refuse it. Have fun getting fired in the middle of a recession. Um, and that was a very interesting period. Like, you know, also we see that any of a country, like no country is prepared for this kind of situation. Hmm. Like they want to save businesses. Uh, they want to save the um, uh, country's economy, but on what cost? Like, who is who is taking the cost of that? Of course, well, of it, course, it's, the workers. It, it's kind of the the idea that if we just make it easier for um, for companies, then they will do the right thing and keep as many people as possible employed, which is not how companies under capitalism work. They want to have they want to maximize profit. At every time, they're not going to like keep people on that they don't need or keep people on 25%, uh, you know, just to do a good deed for their workers. They they will try to maximize profit and abuse the system because that's what they're literally what their goal is in in capitalism. In like, the last uh, episode of Workers Cafe, we were. Uh, like uh, repeating a lot, never ever sign anything, any document that you don't fully understand. Yeah. Or in general, you are always recommended to take the paper with you. If you cannot take the paper because there is no copy for you, as it should be, just make a photo. Because many institutions that we were contacting, uh, they are telling like, yeah, people are signing the papers without like, you know, understanding fully what does it mean, like, what are the consequences, how the next payslip will look like yeah, but under, like, after signing this document. And But there is um, a reason for this. Like, people were being presented this document and were being told either you sign this document or you sign your termination notice. And people for terminate, were terminated for wanting to take the document home to consult someone. And, um, again, this is completely yeah it shouldn't legal. be such a big fight that like you know i don't want to sign this document right now and also we faced a lot of like many cases of bullying because of that like also that was a lot of stress like you know new law and how everything will go of course this is stressful for everybody yeah work also for the managers that's why they are acting very aggressively yeah but i mean they were probably told that they should get everyone to uh, yes, sign of course yeah. um i mean workers were presented this document without even having heard about the law because it was like decided on a, i think saturday and then on monday everyone got this document and most especially the foreign workers mm -hmm. had never heard about it but if they did anything but immediately sign it, they were fired. Um, and yeah, there was like this one case that we had where a person was supposed to sign it that it would start from the 15th of, of March. And she said, but between the 15th of March and now I work more than 25%, I work my full hours. Uh, and because she basically said this, she was fired and then removed from uh, all the shift schedules. So she couldn't prove it communication anymore. Also. Yeah. So so she couldn't prove it anymore. And the only thing the union did when she went to the union was say, we make sure you get your termination period paid out properly. But the fact that this firing was uh, completely breaking her rights, it didn't matter because she was fired because of restructuring. So that is legal. Like, yeah, I think these were it's like the of two right. cases that really showed it. It's a lot of hard cases, but yeah. I am going to direction like, you know, what we can do as workers uh, to protect ourselves from those kind of situations and from those kind of yeah. statements. But so, yeah, you, you've got uh, it. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think um, because it's not I mean, it's just something that is now just seen like it's a problem that has been a problem, a systematic problem since forever. 
Um, and I think it's why both of us like went into organizing. I mean, I know you got yeah. fired for being a representative and yeah. uh, all, the did, all the union did was like make sure you got your wages paid out. But the fact that this was an illegal firing kind of didn't matter. Um, I mean, I was fired. Um, yeah, and also the case solved, like the, the case was with me for two years. Like, you know, yeah. it's just solved recently. Like a month ago, yeah. I, I got the money from my claim. So we are not saying that o always, always you should contact the, uh, the union and ask for your rights and ask for like what to do in this uh, in this situation. But also like that would help me a lot if I would have a support from other workers. Yeah. So organizing at the workplace, but we will. Uh, yeah, go we're, it we're later. going to basically go to that. Like so. The firing, what is happening at the moment, or what has always happened, is that if you as a company fire someone and say it's restructuring, um, nobody will check on whether or not you're actually restructuring. You can literally fire someone and then hire someone for the same position that they got fired, which it's obviously not restructuring. It's just being an at-will employee that you can fire for no reason. Um, and that shouldn't be possible i think under the laws even but it, it's just possible and it basically means that it has always been like this um like when i started this with the iww the first thing we did was have like uh information evenings for workers where we were talking about what are your rights on the market because this was a time um when the unions hadn't translated anything yet <laughs> like this was like some years ago when basically nothing was translated into english and maybe like a little bit into English, but not into Polish. So we were the ones who were like going out to foreign workers and telling them about their rights. And especially in like the restaurant business, we got laughed at by the workers because they are like, uh, maybe these are our rights, but if we go to the union, we will immediately get fired. Like, and the unions, I don't know if they don't know about it. Like sometimes, like I had one case where a worker went to the union because she didn't get paid how much she was supposed to get paid. Mm. Uh, and the union basically told her, yes, we can make a claim to your employer, but you will get into trouble and probably be fired, so we advise you not to do it. So they advised her to be paid under minimum wage or risk being fired. And this was the honest thing to do. But now the unions a lot of times just happily takes a case and contacts the employer and then the employee gets fired. <laughs> And especially now that we will have high unemployment, this will just get worse. Um, so yeah, I think this is kind of the systematic problem that we see and why I turned away from just telling people to go to the union and to workplace organizing. Like, you as, know, first of all, like if you are, yeah, you, you are going to the union, but also you have to think about the goal. Like, what is your goal? What you want to do? Where you want to be? Like. Uh, we had a lot of um, like few cases in the beginning of coronavirus, in the beginning of restrictions, mm -hmm. when people were like fired or yeah fired. But for example, one person got um, uh, housing offered by the employee, like to the end of uh, pandemia, to the end of uh, like you know the crisis in the. Uh, in the tourism, uh, that, that was like a case from, from the hotel. Uh, you can use the staff housing for mm -hmm. like just being there. Like we know that you are in a hard position also, like in a hard situation. Uh, but like, you know, what, what we are doing, like advising people, like when people are writing to us, like, um, like what, what they can do. We are just asking, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay yeah. there? Do you want to stay in Iceland? That was like, you know, uh, a foreign worker. Uh, you just have to decide like, when is your goal? Where is your goal? Yeah. If you want to be paid, if you want to be terminated, if you want to just be paid for um, notice period and just leave the company because the pressure is so high, because the bullying was so, uh, was so high uh, with the firing, with the cutting hours process. Um, yeah, I, I think this is also something like if you are going to the union for advice, ask what are the consequences, like what they like what what they want to do with this case, what they uh, what they want to tell you. Yeah, and make sure they don't 
They don't. Somebody is coming in. We're I, recording. We're recording, but um, you can go upstairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> we um, like all to make sure that like nobody is <laughs> guests. Uh, no, nobody is. Um, that the union doesn't contact your employer without your consent because that sometimes happens that the unions they just see this case so they like write this letter and they send like a letter of a claim or something without having told you and um and you kind of they don't prepare you for like negative pushback from the employer that will happen usually like you get hand of the letter of termination the moment they get the letter from the union um and yeah, a lot, a lot of times they just see the case and they just want to solve like this one case. They don't think about your situation at work after this case is over. Mm. Um, and you just have to be aware of it and make sure that the union isn't doing anything without you having gone through all the consequences of the actions. Yeah. That's why also the consent is so important. Yeah. Like, you know, that like you have to be asked, what do you want to do? and nobody can decide for you how to solve your case because this is your case and you will face the consequences for it. Um, yeah. Um, like what we, um, like the saddest thing I saw last year, um, and I do want to talk about it um, because it still really annoyed me, is that mm. uh, when Appling went on strike, um, the employers very clearly, like they literally told it to the employees, fired people out of retribution for the strike in the bus company and the hotels under the pretense of restructuring. And workers who had gotten fired for basically for having been on strike, they saw their same jobs that they just got fired from being ad advertised at Windermeyer's Dublin. And the unions didn't do anything about this. Like they just, it was firing through restructuring. So they kind of just accepted that there would be mass firings of the people who had gone on strike for the union. And that kind of, yeah, I, that, to me that was the saddest, that the marginalized people went on strike and then they got fired and then the unions were like, but it's illegal firing. <laughs> um, but yeah. But this is how the unions work. They will only follow the law, and if you don't have proof that you got fired for something else, it doesn't matter. And even yeah, even if the firing is illegal, it doesn't also, matter. There is basically, there is no tools to prove it. So yeah, and this is why we went to organizing. Yeah. Um, so I I think. Um, Organizing is basically self-defense um, and to protect your right, rights on the workplace. It's the only way you can make sure that you can protect your rights and not get fired for it. Um, and uh, like practically, I don't see any other way unless you know you put me into government and let me change the laws. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like I, I don't see any other way to um, fight for your rights if you don't do it together with your coworkers. Which is why our first advice is always talk to your coworkers. And it's, I know it's super annoying because the way you think if you're like a, a lawful person basically is you. Um, yes, people are looking at. It. <laughs> yeah. You. Um, like you know these are your rights and you assume if somebody is breaking your rights there will be consequences for that and that you don't have to like organize with your co-workers and like fight for your rights to be recognized because you think this is a lawful country but unfortunately that's just the reality um. yeah and it's also like if, if we are talking about this um, like you know using the excuse uh, for people participating in a strike to uh, make a re restructurization in a, uh, a company like you know res redesigning the re uh, redesign look like uh, 
hiring people and putting them in a different union so it's hard for workers to organize together um, <laughs> or, yeah or firing the wage employees that are in unions and then hiring people as contractors yeah because contractors don't have unions that yeah. happened in the bus companies a lot yeah <laughs> It is extremely um. hard to, like, you know, even if you have organized group of people who want to, uh, like, fight together for their rights, uh, it's becoming more complicated even, like, first of all, mobilizing a group, mm -hmm. it's a very hard thing, but if they are already gathered and already writing a claim, writing an email to their unions, if you have three unions in the workplace, it's harder if like in the situation if you will have one so like i think first of all like if we, if we are talking about like talking with your coworkers, the good idea is like uh, to talk together which union you are in and why mm. yeah because sometimes it's for example connected uh, with differences in uh, in the pay slips yeah in the payments uh in the uh, payments for um, for pension funds also. Yeah. Um, like for example, um, we talked about bus companies. So in a bus company, you can be like people can have the same job being a driver, and they can be in Appling, uh, they can be in Waf Air, they can be in the guide union. Um, she's closing the window. <laughs> You can be in the guide union or you can be a, um, a contractor. So you basically have like uh, maybe 10 workers, all of them working as bus drivers and you're talking and in Cliff, that's the last human union you can be in. You have basically like four different unions they could be in or be a contractor. Um, and it obviously makes a boss's job a lot easier because it, it means that um, workers usually only go to their own union and then you know every union works the case differently and there is no coordinated action between unions so it, it makes it much easier for for bosses to kind of divide and conquer um, and organizing would be a way to basically um, unite and conquer so to say <laughs> unite uh, unite together and conquer the boss um, but yeah um, so yeah, basically I think organizing makes sense because it, it means that like everyone on the workplace ta talks together. Um, it, it's kind of a union busting technique just to put different people in different unions. Um, but it's okay, like you can find that, uh, fight that also. You can, you can not just... Not always. There were like uh, the company after, after the strikes, the companies just uh, put people into cliff uh, because they are... Um, their headquarters were in Hapnerfjörður. And Liv workers were coming to Appling and wanted to change that and were told they cannot change it because mm -hmm. the com company headquarters the location, are in, yeah. um, in, yeah, in Hapnerfjörður. And then you can also kind of do it by just having like a little bit of a um, different like job description or like call the same job different names like there are a lot of ways you can force people into unions that maybe don't want to be in um and then again if you complain you probably just get laid off mm -hmm. so yeah uh, collective action is i think the only way you can you can do it um so how do you organize as self-defense like, let's talk a little bit about self-defense on the job. Um, so I think the first thing is you have to like find people that you trust. Like, don't try and start with everyone. Try and start with um, one maybe, or two people. Yeah, maybe you have one trusted person. You can just yeah. consult them. Like, you know, what they are feel like, uh, what they are feel about their uh, work conditions, what they are feel about their schedule. Like schedule is something that uh, is affecting your everyday uh, functioning in a workplace. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know what's happening in here. <laughs> There's like construction going on around us. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, schedule is sometimes like you know something that is really really affecting our lives. Like yeah, I I mean just basically like to find a few people that you trust and start 
start sharing information. You know, like what kind of contract do you have? Um, what union are you in? Uh, how is your relationship with your boss going? Like, how is your work going? Just. I would guess that if you have someone at work that you trust that is your friend, you're already um, having these conversations anyway, because I mean, at my work, people talk about work, that's what you do. Um, I guess sharing your contract and stuff is just one other step mm -hmm. to that. In this specific time, uh, people should talk about this shortening hours. Yeah, I'm or the perspective, like, you know, how the company, because workers knows everything about the workplace, sometimes even more than the bosses. So they should share information between themselves, like what are their predictions of how company is running right now? And is it able to work after the crisis? Or what are the plans of the bosses for next month? Like that would be my recommendation to talk about those issues. Yeah. So if you have like, um, basically two or three people at your workplace that you trust and you're already talking anyway, you can make a, a pact together um, and basically um, agree with each other that you will share all the information that is available. Like if the boss is offering you a contract, you will share the contract with each other and compare and discuss. Um, and uh, if the boss is calling one person to the office, you can, for example, and this is kind of very important because a lot of times the boss calls you to the office, tells you to do X or else you will get fired. Um, and a lot of times, because there's no record, it will be your word against the boss's word. Uh, so a very important pact to make with someone you trust, for example, is to say, if the boss calls me into the office, you go with me. If the boss calls you, I go with you. And so the second person can just sit there quietly and write everything down that is said, um, which will also sometimes prevent the boss from saying like, something, making certain threats threat. because mm -hmm. suddenly they they know it will be written down. Also, if uh, if we are like you know unexpectedly uh, asked to join this type of conversation or like. The normal talk with the boss became some become something like um, something that will influence our future mm -hmm. uh, future working conditions. It's always the best, and we we have to remember about that. Write a note and send it in an email if you understand it correctly. So according to our conversation last Thursday at this and this hour, uh, I understood that. We agreed on this, this, and this. Mm. For example, that I'm uh, gonna change my working schedule. I be, will be working four, not five days a week right now. Like, you know, you have to have everything in paper because also later, if you are coming to the institutions for help, you will have it as a proof. Like, that was said this day. Or, like, I had dangerous, in, um, like, very, like, you know, threatening and stressful conversation with my manager this and this day, yeah. write it like, you know, like uh, I really like the idea of a worker's diary because in every countries of Europe, mm. uh, this is working as a legal proof. Yeah. It's, it's enough that you have like normal notebook, like, you know, in paper and you are writing your check in and, che and check out hours. And if there is a problematic situation or, for example, you don't have sprit, you don't have disinfectants at your workplace because they run out and uh, the boss is not agreeing to uh, replace it quickly or you don't have any more rubber gloves or you don't have masks when you have like uh, less than two meters contact with the client. This is something that you should write down and we've got dangerous times. You have to take care about your health, about your physical health and about your emotional health. So uh, this stressful situation should be noted. Yeah, I think writing down work hours is also really important oh, now yes, because always. obviously like all the employers are trying to only pay 25% even if their workers are working more. Um, and so if you complain to the boss, they will just exclude you from like the, the schedule group or whatever. They will like immediately take the proof that they control away from you while they obviously cannot take your work diary away from you. Um, and it's also like a, a lot of things I hear when people come to us with cases is like, 
I don't understand what is happening. My boss was always so nice to me. Mm-hmm. So they are kind of, they think their boss is nice. So they do everything just over like conversations and they don't write anything down. And, um, and then as soon as there is a problem, the boss obviously like brings down the I have power over you. Like, yeah, I've um, got the pictures of your schedule from the next uh, from the previous month yeah yeah and like every every kind of communication they control they will like remove you from and um well basically they are nice to you as long as it's convenient to them and as soon as it's not convenient to them anymore they will just use their authority over you it's um and um so writing everything down from the beginning gives you like a proof that's independent from the boss and uh, having these kind of agreement with your co-workers to always face the boss together even if the boss is nice will protect you if the boss decides to not be nice anymore because there is like an inherent disbalance between uh, worker and boss uh, which basically means that the boss can decide at any moment not to be nice anymore and it is in your interest to move this disbalance uh, to to make it better for you to to have like a relationship that's more on level um even if your boss is nice because you you shouldn't have to rely on someone being nice to you like you, you shouldn't have to like uh, hope and trust that somebody is nice to you and will not use their authority against you i mean we you know live in a democracy it should it should just be understood that people are nice to you <laughs> i had this funny conversation with my friend that uh, this like repeating family relations and friendship relations at the workplace should be uh, perceived as a harassment at the workplace <laughs> because also like th- this is used in like every time every time you are hearing the stories like but you know, uh, no, I'm friends with my boss, you know? Like, uh, he's so nice to me always. He's helping me a lot. Sometimes he's borrowing me uh, the car, you know? And I, I've got so much of a profit from this job, also emotionally, because he's telling me such nice things always. And I know his family. And uh, like, you know, we, we are just a good team. You are not the team. You are not friends. This is the person who is paying you. Yeah, I mean, just someone who has that much power over you cannot really be a a friend. This person is deciding how much you are getting every month. Yeah. And And how much you are getting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, you find people that you trust. Uh, You basically decide to share in all the information. You decide to always face the boss together. Uh, Then you can do things like. um, do the physical mapping of the workplace that we talked last time to basically see if there are places where the boss can corner you because as soon as you will face the boss together all the time the boss will try and get people alone Um, so then you kind of have to be prepared for that Um, and then you can basically look at your co-workers and see who you might want to bring into your circle of trust Mm -hmm. uh, to start doing the same with um, and this would be like the very short beginning of an organizing campaign. And like, and it is self-defense. If you want to make sure that your rights will get respected at the workplace, you have to do this because even though they exist on paper, they are not guaranteed. They are not guaranteed by the unions. They are not guaranteed that you will not get punished for wanting these rights. Uh, one of the things restaurant workers used to laugh at were like the break times when we talked about how much break you're supposed to have <laughs> and they're like oh i was walking uh five hours today and after five hours my boss was like okay i'll give you 10 minutes of a break and it's illegal but what can they do if they go if they complain about it alone they will be fired um, and also in most of the cases that we had and that we went through, it's like people are so busy that they do not see anymore how much they are exploited mm. and how bad is the situation in the company. Like sometimes we are uh, getting requests to help a group of workers organizing and we see that like, you know, after 
first meetings that hey this company that doesn't exist anymore you've got all the red lights like you know <laughs> no. the toxic relationships like you've got all the red lights that something is wrong like the boss is receiving the letters uh, from vindication companies yeah. from the debt collectors like hey red light run away yeah. find yeah. another job uh, if you can like of course like we have to wait for this crisis but uh, to to pass but and and we know that we are working with the basic workers we are um supporting the workers that are working on minimum wage we know and also we were those workers yeah um like you know I, we know how hard it is to make this decision to change the job or sometimes uh, especially in the basic jobs like housekeeping uh, people are told that they won't find any better job yeah but the that thing there is, is no now, perspective for them now this is it, bullshit but it don't will, listen to that but it will be coming true now because we now have like it's the first time ever that iceland mm -hmm. is dealing with unemployment I think one of the reasons the unions were so blasé about people being fired is because it was always really low unemployment and always really easy for people to find new jobs. But I think now uh, where unemployment is actually becoming the threat that it was like, I mean, I, I remember that like being unemployed was like this, mm -hmm. this uh, fear that I basically grew up with, that my father might get unemployed and what then. Um, I mean, also because my father almost did lose his job because of uh, restructuring. Um, and that was a really scary time. And then the union went on strike and saved his job. Unions of Iceland. <laughs> Maybe you might want to like. That was think Germany. About that. that was the case in Germany, okay? <laughs> like, let's yeah, clear it out. But this was restructuring. <laughs> like, this was actual restructuring. They wanted to, 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 break, to close the branch my father was working in. And the union went on strike in all the branches to prevent this one branch being closed to preserve people's jobs. And isn't that a normal thing a union should do? Christina, <laughs> uh, people that are commenting on the situation with coronavirus and the consequences of that for people, they are pointing out that because Germany is still, uh, like, you know, has still the strongest uh, labor unions in this part of Europe. Uh, that's why it's um, only a few uh, death, uh, death cases with coronavirus, because workplaces are organized. Yeah, because uh, the unions in Germany, they are at the workplaces and they actually get an active say in how the workplaces are run. Also, there is tradition um, and there is tradition of solidarity in the workplaces, saying, uh, like asking which union you are in, it's not a scary person uh, a scary question mm. or like suspicious uh, suspicious question or like organizing at the workplace it is said to be like you know for the workers safety yeah and it is literally for the workers safety and for like you know keeping them alive in a times like this yeah so and yeah, but this is because the union is at the workplace and because here you don't have these kind of workplace committees, you have to make your own mm. um, and have to protect each other. And I know this is a little bit of a hard truth, but this is how it is. If you want your rights to be protected, if you want to be safe at your workplace, you have to start organizing. Um, and we can help you with that. Now, I mean, a reason why I think we... Um, we went into the union movement is because we saw that there was this big systematic gap yeah. uh, that we wanted to fill. Um, at least. But you know, we were talking. Yeah, we were talking before that. Uh, you said that you weren't such a radical when you joined uh, a solidarity union. I mean, in I just 2014. Uh, when did I? When did I join? 2013, I joined. Okay. Um, no, like when I first joined, like I never came from any to any of this out of like I ideology. I, I always I'm a very practical person. Like when I first joined the IWW, I didn't even know what the IWW was. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, and so when somebody told me it's this union that existed since 1905, I'm like, okay, it must be an American thing. Um, and then after like the third meeting, at some point I like wrote in my notes, what is syndicalism? And then like Google it when I came home. Um, 
<laughs> and didn't understand the Wikipedia article. Like I had this friend in the union, he's very smart and like very educated and he, he kept telling me about all these books he read about like syndicalists and anarchists and whatever and he's like have you read this and you know do you know this person and what she said like especially like German philosophers which, uh, <laughs> like a lot of uh, and I'm like no no I, I don't know any of them I haven't read I haven't even read Das Kapital to be fair um, <laughs> and and this is where now my leftist <laughs> it's like I'm going to be kicked out of the leftist sphere right there no you know why <laughs> you know why Christina because you are the person who is a real organizer like you you are first of all like this is also like um, if you want to organize it's the best to find your crowd because it's not much you can do alone and like you know for example in the union that works and have new projects it's good to find your role because some of people can be radical bureaucrats but like you know that they're good with numbers me. Yeah, you are yeah. amazing in like you know keeping everything <laughs> together and making excel files for everything we have in here uh, there are people who are talking a lot and organizing stuff and also I like that you're pointing at yourself. You know, we need people that talk a lot. Yes. They don't do much else, but they talk a lot. So that's yes. <laughs> and they're good in representing minorities, right? Because they, they yes. are such a minority. Our token Polish person. We yes, love exactly. <laughs> uh, but like you know, I'm so when I joined IWW, I was looking for a knowledge because I think if you are active in official structures of labor movement or like getting into representing foreign workers in official structures in, in Iceland, and that was my case, I also needed tools and I also needed like, you know, to compare like what is better to write an email or to organize a direct action, mm -hmm. how those things can go together, how, uh, organizing in the union and going outside of the union's building can be needed with like just saving workers conditions yeah i think that is kind of the problem of the unions um that they obviously have like people working in the office who know a lot about the laws but it's been a very long time since they have seen what the actual problems in in the workplaces are and they like had a long time since they actually ever really talked to a worker so the all they do is apply the laws yeah. the same with dissidents the same with people who are creating law this is so hard to imagine the conditions that people are working in the basic uh, working in in basic jobs when you have for a year for two years for three years a position hmm that is paid more than uh, half a million kronas per month. I, I actually met a really nice person in RSE um, who is doing a lot of interesting projects. Um, I forgot her name. Um, it's like a year ago that I met her. And uh, we talked a little bit and she's like, I really cannot understand. Like, uh, I hear all these cases about workers who like, we had this campaign, like uh, your rights on the work market, like Rechtsetzen, I think it was called. Um, and That's so now all the people like mm -hmm. know their rights and yet people are still being exploited and they know they're being exploited and yet it's still happening like I, I don't really understand why they let themselves be uh, exploited and I'm like because I don't want to get fired like <laughs> it's, it's and also very simple but she hasn't seen like workplaces and she like hasn't like she probably has never like really experienced this fear that we foreigners have of losing like our little bit of stability that we have and you know having like one month of not no income basically means yeah. you're homeless now yeah. and um and and therefore if the employer tells you like accept this or i fire you they go like okay i accept it i guess and also there is a lot of misinformation around it like you know nobody like you can hear uh, so often as a foreign person in the basic jobs uh, nobody will fire uh, nobody will hire you right now because i know everybody in this uh, in this town yeah that is like no we've got friends right. everywhere this is like the major threat or like no 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 like with your uh, education or like without speaking icelandic you won't find a proper job you know you have to wait uh, for like learning Icelandic mm. and you won't learn Icelandic because you are working 12 hours a day even if you are working 100% this is like super hard to find time to learn this super hard language 
Mm, yes. <laughs> and then you've got different level of discrimination because you will always speak with an accent. Yeah. Uh, and even though, like, you know, you, you speak Icelandic, you will speak Icelandic like a five years old, so nobody will uh, take you seriously in the beginning, mm. and then it's just your accent. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of issues, but there is a lot of issues to organize around. And, um, like, I am happy to to choose this way and be still present at the at the workplaces and talking with workers because this is uh, so important. That's why I cannot wait for us to meet. So we are not only two of us in the yeah. workers cafe, but we have uh, some people to to talk with. Which is probably a really good segue to talk about first of May. Yes. Um, so we are losing the opportunity to meet because of the gathering ban, but okay, we have to survive it next year, next year. Yeah. But we are organizing some things for well, first of May. Yeah. So obviously there will be this will be the first time since 2013, I think that. We are not having a radical like first of May uh, on the street. Um, we're not going to be standing on like a talk, and uh, maybe we're like putting one of them alone at like a talk and film them give a speech. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> not me. Yeah. I'm not volunteering for that. Um, no, but so what we are going to do is have like an online first of May. Yep. Uh, we are at the moment trying to prepare like some articles and speeches and stuff and I will probably sing with someone together um, and now nobody will come <laughs> uh, but we are also wanted to have like a meetup where basically um, yeah where yeah we will um, be think like we will think about some um, like online conference like maybe zoom but maybe on some uh, more like <laughs> I hate you. more convenient server uh, <laughs> that you can join and you can uh, ask about something or share your experience or uh, like you know just just have a conversation together uh, yeah. about the uh, labor issues yeah so basically we like I think most of us in the union we will just be hanging out together yeah. on some online platform and then people can like call in and ask questions or just get to know us ask questions about the IWW um, maybe interest is interested in joining we're always looking for more members um, and yeah so we will probably have a way for you guys to meet us face to face through the internet on 1st of May yeah. And also we are planning a lot of workshops because uh, many organizers are more at home, more by their computers, so we prepared some, uh, some workshops already, but please if you are interested in any of the topics that we um, pointed out in here or you want to just consult or on, some, on something, you can just write to uh, island at iww.org. Mm -hmm or our fa Facebook site or whatever in the comment section here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think um, this is it for today. Look, this is so perfect. Like it's 58. Okay. We were Wait, talking for an hour. Don't you think I timed hour. this? I'm huh? like, I'm, I'm like, I, I had that in my brain. I've been like hyming in my head. Of course. Everything's I'm, planned. Like somebody the other time was like, you know, they, they say that it's it's a uh, it's a prejudice that Germans are organized, but you're like <laughs> com completing the profile there. No, it's it's my father. My my father wants, um, and I'm going to put this on the internet, but he doesn't really speak English. Uh, he <laughs> once made an Excel sheet to organize our freezer, and this is my background, and I cannot escape it. <laughs> also, what we can like, what can be useful these days for people? Because like we know. And we are also, like, we are aware that many things are written, many statements are published, but it's not so convenient to find them. It's not so convenient to, like, even to, as a foreign person, to know all the shortcuts from all the, like, you know, what is IC, what is, like, you know, what is the system of the labor unions in here? Like, it's hard to figure it out, but for sure, if you have 
uh, problems with cutting hours or being unemployed, you will contact Vinu Maula Stopnun. And this is unemployment office in Iceland. And they've got very good translations in English and in Polish. And every, uh, like every day they are adding new stuff. And those are all the statements from the official institutions that are uh, connected with the case of cutting hours and being fired. And uh, also the most frequently asked questions. That is all the list and all the answers. So please find it. Like before you are contacting Vinomala Stopnon, uh, please just dig in the, in the page. It's not so intuitive uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to read everything there, but try, try to click one link, try to come back and to the mm -hmm. topic. There is a lot of interesting stuff in there. And I think the Multicultural Center is now having mm -hmm. on their website also information about this um, in all possible languages. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, feel free to contact us if you have any questions, uh, if you want to join. Uh, even though at the moment it's like all online, but um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, that is all. Thank um, you so much for watching. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for watching. For and I just want to point out the logo that I'm really proud of. I made it. Oh and my the other gosh, logo? did you put? Did you put the? Yes, I'm going okay. to put the logo back on. So Anna made this one. I said it's too cute. It's cute. It looks like um, ice cream shop. I love it. The, and the cat is cute and it has a sticker on it. Yes. Yeah, so this is our temporary, temporary logo, logo unless we get until we get a logo from a professional person. <laughs> it's still better than the logo f from this event. Hey, like nobody get that it's a flag. Uh, to me, like it really you, you looks saw like this. You okay. saw this. Please uh, like tell in the comment if you like the logo that is on the event more than this cutesy little logo with a cat that doesn't this look so revolutionary bad. at all. This is so bad. I want to. I want to show it. Like uh, nobody. If you don't see her anymore, I killed her. That just you know. <laughs> it's so bad. It's obviously a flag. It's, it's so, so bad. Pretty. Okay. Well. Uh, if the union breaks apart, it will be because of us. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a beef, officially. We've got a beef. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank bye you. Bye. <laughs> you have to go to stop streaming. <laughs>